member is deployed abroad in the military and you have to deal with some of the uh, uh, difficulties of family uh, issues at that point. And so the benefit went into effect 11 days ago. We're still you know, in our honeymoon period and so excited. And the benefit uh, phases in over the next four years. So right now, people who take paid family leave in New York can get up to eight weeks of time off at 50% of their weekly wage up to the state average weekly wage, 50% of the state average weekly wage. And that will phase in over the next four years to become 67% of their wages and 12 weeks of time off. And as I mentioned, the last major part is that it's job protected. And that's crucial to being able to go and deal with your uh, important family issues and knowing that you'll have a job to come back to. So that's paid family leave in a nutshell. That's great. It's a good yeah. way to start off the conversation. If you missed it, if you want more, I'm sure we'll repeat it throughout the hour. That's a lot of info and a great, great start. Thank you, Max. Sure. How has it been going in the 11 days? Uh, as well? It's exciting. People yeah. are taking paid family leave in New York and uh, people who have never had that opportunity. Uh, we're hearing stories every day of uh, people who just had a new baby, people who are taking time off to care for a parent. Um, and I actually heard today that uh, people are starting to get checks in the mail who started right away. Mm -hmm. um, so they, uh, people were excited. The, the applications were in even before the first of the year. Wow. So uh, we're really excited and uh, we're excited to answer people's questions so that they can take advantage of their benefit. Yeah, and just uh, everyone in talking before, I'm just so glad to be with you guys because everybody up here is invested in it, and it's such an important topic for so many people watching. This is just a great opportunity for helping you care for your loved ones and your different situations. So, go ahead. And I think it's important to say, too, it applies extremely broadly in New York. Mm -hmm. So uh, for all employers that have at least one employee, those employees are eligible to take paid family leave for uh, one of the reasons that Max stated. So it's a very broad program and it's, it's exciting to be part of the implementation of it. Yes. Let's get going with these questions. We have our first question from Andrea. Will my paid leave be equivalent to the salary I currently make? So let's talk those numbers again about how that salary ranges. You want to take that? Yeah, sure. So. Um, you receive a, a wage replacement that's representative of, you know, you take a look at your entire salary and you average out a salary during, you know, each week that you work and that's your average weekly wage. And for paid family leave, you can get up to, in the first year, up to 50% of your average weekly wage. There is a maximum that's set at what we call the statewide average le weekly wage. So in the first year, um, if you're taking the maximum benefit, um, that would be about $650 uh, a week. So that's a, a phased in part of the program. It starts at up to a 50% of the state average weekly wage. And after four years, so 2021, full implementation is two thirds of your average weekly, weekly wage. So you get half wage replacement is really the answer to the question. Yeah, that's a great way to understand it. Thanks, David. Um, next from Angel Cologne. This is a long one, guys. So I work for NYU. Um, both my boys have FMLA. I recently lost my benefits. Um, wait, here we go. Yeah, he recently lost his benefits because he took a couple of days off to take care of them. I've gone back and forth with the 1199 union and the HR department to get reinstated, but so far nothing. How can you get granted FMLA on one hand, but then lose the prescription coverage you need to take care of the person or persons? It didn't make sense. I need the meds to get them better so I can get back to work. Obviously a bit frustrated, so let's help yeah. out th here. There's several aspects of that, of that question, some of which are really about paid family leave and some are, uh, I think in general, about um, uh, your situation as yeah, as other employee. benefits, and we can't really speak to right. prescription drug plans and right. all of that. Yeah, what yeah. I could say in general is that uh, FMLA, which is means the uh, which is the federal program that provides for periods of time to take leave for yourself or to care for someone else um, in a medical leave situation, it's unpaid. Uh, and the big difference between that and New York's program is New York's program is paid. So you can have FMLA benefits and the paid family leave benefits, and they're designed to work together for employers that um, are qualified to provide FMLA, meaning they're larger employers. Good. Well, thank you for helping with the parts that we could. Hope that helps you. Um, we have another question. Sue from White, um, let's see. 
one more. Oh, yeah, here we go. I'm going to move on, actually. I think that was a duplicate. So let's go to Nancy from Queens. <laughs> Nancy from Queens, do I pay for this, like, out of my pocket? That's what she says. She's wondering, does she pay for it out of her pocket? This is, this is a great question. You've been paying for it out of your pocket um, for at least a little while now, and it's such a small amount that a lot of folks haven't even noticed. It's 0.126% of, of your salary. Um, so it's a fairly small deduction. Um, we hope it's not too painful. Um, but, uh, yes, you are paying for it. Um, and it works like any other employee benefit uh, that you pay into and then can access when you need it. Yeah, and that rate that you, know, you just mentioned in terms of what you pay, that's set uh, by uh, the state agency called the, the uh, Department of, of uh, Financial Services. And it's based on what kind of contributions from employees would it take spread over the entire state you know, with all the employees in the state that would uh, provide an ability to pay for this program as an insurance product so it's it's the benefits are provided by insurance carriers so employers who take out uh, policies for paid family leave combine it with their existing policies for disability benefits so what they collect from you as an individual employee is that small deduction uh, for most people it's uh, you know a dollar to about a dollar sixty five um, a week out of your paycheck. Um, it just depends on how much you make. It can be less than that as well. It can be well. a lot lower than that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it can be. It's so just, just to give an example that, that's helpful, yeah. like if you yeah. make uh, $27,000 a year, you'd be paying about 60 cents a week for the benefit. Wow. And then you could, if you take paid family leave, be earning uh, at that rate about $250 a week to take care, you know, while you're off to take care of someone. You know, it's such a small price mm -hmm. to pay for such an incredible amount of, of peace of mind. You know, we, we talked about this being one of the strongest programs in the country. And I think, you know, the protection that it gives to be sure that you have a job when you come back and to get that wage replacement uh, is just incredibly valuable. You know, and we talked about the enthusiasm that we're hearing from our members and from, from other people in the community. You know, this is something that New Yorkers have been crying out for for years. You know, and it's just taken the right leadership. And, you know, we at AARP are certainly grateful to the governor for leading on this. Um, and it's, it's a wonderful program. I'm so happy to hear that the calls are coming in and that people are starting to get their benefit already. And it's important, too, to not just talk about um, are they taking contributions now from your paycheck, but is that benefit available to me now? And the answer is absolutely yes. Mm. So as long as, for most people, it's, it's as long as you've worked for 26 weeks with, with the employer, um, then you are eligible right now to take paid family leave, even if that policy went into effect for your employer a week ago. So if you, know, you gave birth sometime in the last few months and you're looking to take the bonding portion of the leave, you can do that now. You don't have to wait. Okay, good, good. Let's keep going. Frank, um, if I waive this benefit, can I get the reimbursement from my insurance deduction through payroll? So there's a very limited um, group of people who are uh, allowed to waive out of the program. So essentially the waiver, the waiver process is if you'll never or are not expected to ever qualify to take paid family leave, and we, you know, David was just talking a little bit about the eligibility. So to take paid family leave, you have to have worked, if you work full time, so that's more than 20 or more hours per week, you have to have worked for your employer for 26 weeks. Okay. And if you work part time, so that's less than 20 hours per week, you have to have worked for your employer for 175 days, a little longer than, than uh, half a year. So if you're not expected to work that long, say you're a seasonal worker who just comes in for three months, then you're allowed to waive out of the program when you join, when you sign up with, with your employer, and they'll provide you with the form to do that. And then you won't pay any, um, any of the premiums to cover the benefit. However, if you will be eligible, there's no, there's no waiver process. So the idea is this is something that um, the situations that people need to take leave, it's unpredictable. Mm -hmm. yeah. People have children, people have sickness in their family, um, the way the program works is, you know, everyone's a part of it so that everybody, ha everybody has it. And so there's, it's a limited group of people who are allowed to waive out, and um, they'll find out about that from their employer uh, when they're hired or if they're already working there short term from their employer now. But if you waived and then you needed it, so you would suggest probably... Well, the thing is, so if you waived out, but it turns out you actually work long enough to uh, work for that employer, mm -hmm. 
So you didn't think you'd work for the 26 weeks, so you waved out. You yeah. said, I will never be able to take it, so I'm not going to be a part of the program. Right. But it turns out they love you. They're going to keep <laughs> you on board. They're hiring you uh, for the next two years or, or just in perpetuity. Um, your waiver is automatically revoked okay. because... Now you could take paid family leave. And we don't want people to be in a situation like you're describing right. where all of a sudden they're, they, made a, you know, they, they made a decision originally and now all of a sudden they need this benefit. So we want to make sure that people actually have the protections that we want all New Yorkers to have and that you know, we're leading the country on. Yeah, because those protections are so unpredictable. Exactly. In life, you just exactly. never know yeah. what's going to happen. So the literal answer to that question is there's actually in that situation that the... Um, uh, the viewer asked, there is nothing to reimburse because you, right. let's say you're somebody, uh, you're, you're working for the summer for 13 weeks and you're, you know you're not going to hit the 26 weeks. So you'll wave out, you won't actually make any contribution. So there's nothing to reimburse in that particular situation. Very helpful. And I think it was a former first lady who said, you know, we are all of us caregivers. You know, we either have been one, we will be one, or we are one, or we may need one. You know, and I, and I think your point about family caregiving sometimes being very unpredictable speaks to the importance of this law. You know, it gives those of us who are caring for an elderly parent or, or loved one the protection that we need for when the unexpected happens. It's true, but when we were talking before, we each had a story. My yeah. grandma is 95, my mom and I are her aunts, my aunt are caring for her, you had a story, you had a story, everybody, everybody has, has, has yeah. a story. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure all of you watching do too, which is why you're watching, because you want this information. So we're doing great, guys. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and the governor talked about it. We, you know, he just spoke uh, on the eve of the launch, on the 31st. He talked about his story. Mm -hmm. Right before, you know, leading up to writing and passing, which I know David worked on, uh, paid family leave. Uh, he talked about how his father uh, was sick and he was able to spend time with him before he uh, passed away and how it... Uh, shined a light on the situation that so many New Yorkers didn't at that point have the flexibility and the option to be with their family and to take care of them and to, to be with them in those moments that you don't get back. Right. And so that's something that now all New Yorkers have that flexibility. Yeah. And I think the, the important thing that goes along with that is, yes, it provides for some wage replacement benefits, a significant amount of wage replacement benefits. But it's also extremely important at the time you're taking the leave, where you may be at your most vulnerable, your family may be at its most vulnerable, that you know you can take that leave without fear of losing your job for taking yes. that leave. Yeah. Um, and, and that's you know, one of the big pillars of the program is providing um, protection against retaliation for having you know, taken your, the leave that you're entitled to, to take mm -hmm. care for your family. Everybody watching just went, ah, yeah, you know, that's yeah. such a relief to know what you've worked so hard at and you're, you're working so hard in your workplace to know that it will be there. Um, that's just awesome. Well, and family caregiving can be so stressful. You know, even under the best circumstances, it can be emotionally draining and financially draining. Um, and to now know that, you know, your job will be there for you and that some of your wages will, will be able to be replaced. You know, it just takes such a burden off, you know. We know, you know, caregiving can be expensive. You know, there's a lot of cash outlay for all sorts of things. And, you know, to know that you're still getting um, your wages is, is absolutely critical. Yeah, I was looking at the numbers of how many people are working a full-time job in the country and taking care of their loved ones. And, I mean, that's two full-time jobs right there because it is. It is hard work, caregiving. It's tremendously hard work, and it's, it's good work. I mean, I, as the governor spoke to, you know, it's time that he valued to be able to spend with mm -hmm. his father. For those of us who have been caregivers, it's, you know, a job that you would never give up for anything. Yes, right, know? yeah. But this just this adds, you know, the really important protections and wage replacement that makes it a little bit easier to do. Yeah. Very good. Should we move on? Sure. Let's see what else we have. Okay, Greg from Brooklyn. I adopted my son in August 2017. Can I apply for bonding time now that this went into effect? This wasn't available in 2017. That's a great question. Yes, and I'm happy to say the answer is yes, absolutely. Wow. Um, and that, stop. Yeah. Wow. So, <laughs> uh, that's the big headline. Good for you, yeah. Greg. <laughs> that's uh, great. So I'm just going to pick a date and say uh, the adoption happened August 1st. Just okay. So yeah. from from up until August 1st, 2018, 
those eight weeks of bonding leave are available. So the, the way it works is that you have a year to use up to whatever the benefit available at the time is. And for the first year, it's eight weeks. It'll evolve over four years. It'll go to 10 weeks. It'll stay there for a year after that. And then it'll go up to 12 weeks. So um, for the period of time you're talking about, which is between now and August 1st, let's say, 2018, there are eight weeks of bonding available um, for each employee who has uh, adopted. So you may have a, a partner or a spouse that's also adopted uh, the child and they too, if they're an employee, have paid family leave available. And then do you suggest just kind of mapping out like what works best for your family, what your timeline is, if you're planning to adopt, if you're planning to get pregnant, how do you make those kind of big decisions so that you get what you need? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the if you you know, know in advance, and sometimes childbirth can happen suddenly, so you don't <laughs> yeah. necessarily know exactly when it's going to happen, but if you have some sort of sense about when the birth or the adoption or the um, foster finalization is going to take place, you can plan for how you're going to use your, your bonding leave. Um, if you're a mother, uh, you have some time to recover from childbirth, that you might have other leave available to you, including uh, the, the disability benefits leave, and you can take disability benefits leave, and then you can take your bonding leave. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and so there is a lot of planning that can take place. If there is more than one parent um, or custodian involved, they can plan on exactly how they're going to take the leave, which kind of touches on a, another topic as well, which is you do not need to take the leave, whether it's for bonding or to help with uh, the serious health condition or the military leave. You don't have to take it in one chunk. You don't have to take it in one week chunks. You can take it intermittently, um, even down to you know individual days. So you can plan, perhaps if there are two parents involved, yeah. I'll take two weeks, then you'll take two weeks. I mean, you yes. can do that sort of thing as well. I so, think that's huge. Yeah, David, go ahead. just a follow-up question. So for grandparents who are taking care of grandchildren, does this, this law give them the same sort of protections? Uh, not for bonding because they're, okay. yeah, but for the serious for health the actual condition. care. Yes. Child yes. Care. Yes. Yeah, for if they, if they have a health condition. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. It's good to but yeah. So, I'm oh, sorry. Go, no, go ahead. So, so, so let's say someone is taking the recovery. There's a need to have a, a recovery from childbirth. It's obviously uh, very physically demanding. It can have complications. Um, so if you're, let's say someone is, uh, a mother is taking uh, time for recovery from childbirth, they may very well need care that that she can get from um, a parent or grandparent. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's no for the bonding for the grandparent, but not for the serious health mm -hmm. condition in that very situation. I love that this just wraps around the <laughs> entire family. It yeah. It's so holistic. Yeah. 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 Let's go back to that point that you made. You don't have to take it all at one time because there's doctor's visits. There's different things and you can just block it out. How does that work? How do you say, I'll need two days here? How does that work? So when you apply for paid family leave, let's, let's talk in a specific example. Say that you're taking time off to care for someone who unfortunately has to seek regular treatment. Maybe it's chemotherapy or some other regular doctor's visit and they have a serious health condition that needs your care. You can apply not to take off a week or two of time, but you can apply to take off the days that you're going to need to take off to take them to the doctor and to care for them and to be there for them when they're you know, seeking treatment. So it might be every Thursday for the next 12 weeks and you can use those days and then spread out your time over over a period of time and and then if that's the case that's only 12 days and you'll still have the rest of your leave that year to use as needed so smart and so mm -hmm. efficient yeah so you're not wasting these important days you can manage it right yeah because those are the days where the where care is needed and so the program right. you know understands that and the same thing with parents I know particularly child care is expensive so maybe the parents both, you know, if there's two parents, they both want to take off the first couple of weeks, but then maybe one of the parents wants to go back to work and save their time and take off later in the year when they're going to need coverage and someone to, to be there and be home with their child. So that's also really, you know, to be able to break it up into weeks or days is really helpful. Very helpful. Yeah. Let's see what else we have. We have a question here from Stacy. I only work part-time as a clerk. Can I apply for this? My mom is currently going through chemo. So again, I think it goes back to how many hours, right? Yeah, so Max touched on uh, kind of that, that line that you cross from part-time to full-time, basically, which is 20 hours a week, regular weeks for 26 weeks. 
The eligibility could happen that way. Um, so if you work regularly 20 hour weeks for 26 weeks, which is basically six months, or it's 175 days. And so if you have um, been working part time um, and you, you know, you're not hitting the 20 hour threshold, but let's say you've been there a year and you've worked, you know, two, let's say uh, in a typical year, most employees work about between 220 and 240 days. So if you've been there for a year or two and you've worked those 220 days, you've crossed the 175 days, mm -hmm. so you are eligible. And you are eligible now. Okay, good. Yeah. Good information. Jim, can I use this leave for a friend who's currently going through dialysis? So he's saying, can he care for a friend? So so the, the law is specific on the types of people that you could take uh, paid family leave to take care of. Uh, which is, and David, please correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. but it's for children, for spouses and domestic partners, and for grandparents, and then all, you know, parent, it includes in-law, uh, child is an expansive definition, adopted, uh, foster, um, you know, any kind of child, um, uh, stepchild. Uh, the one sort of caveat there, so it doesn't include a friend, except, um, you know, I did mention that it includes uh, domestic partners, and so that's an expansive definition. So that you know, I don't know the situation here, yeah. but since the definition is really broad about who you have a not necessarily you know a married relationship, but a caretaking relationship, some people could um, fall under that category. But for the most part, those are the people who you can take care of. Right. And if someone did have a specific question about that, um, I don't know if we've mentioned the uh, the eight hundred number, but you know, people can call and ask questions like that if they want to uh, get some specific information. Mm -hmm. They could also get information from their employer or from the insurance carrier. Um, uh, but you know, each fact situation is is very very different. In general, friends you know wouldn't qualify as domestic partners. Certainly, if they don't live together, right. there's really no possibility of that. But um, yeah, that is one of those uh, outside the border right. uh, areas of uh, friends. I don't want to miss that plug that you gave. The you, mentioned, you mentioned the hotline, but we didn't it. say what it was. Go ahead. 844 337 6303. And, uh, you know, we're here to answer any of your questions. We also have a website, uh, ny.gov slash paid family leave. A ton of information. Lots of answers to these questions are already on there, and we add more as you send them in. So um, we will definitely help you. Laura, do you have any websites that you I would like do. to share? Thank you for that. <laughs> um, anyone uh, can go to aarp.org backslash nypaidleave for more information as well. I went and I looked at the resources to connect with people who are going through the same thing, to watch videos about people who are going through the same thing, to have a sense of community. The resources there are really great on both sites. So thank you for sharing. Thank you. Great. Um, speaking of the technicalities, who you can care for, things like that, I wondered for serious illness, is that determined case by case basis about what serious illness is when you apply or are there categories that people should know about? It's such a broad term, serious illness. Yeah, and there it is defined. Um, I'm not telling people to go and read the regulations, but yeah. uh, we have regulations that, that have um, very specific information on what that is, including Good. examples. And a lot of that information is also available on the website. In general, mm -hmm. you know, a serious health condition is something, uh, you know, beyond, it's certainly beyond the common cold, um, right, beyond, right. you know, kind of short term uh, illnesses. It's someone who's going to really require, you know, ongoing care or at least ongoing, you know, medical supervision. They can be in a facility, they don't have to be in a facility, they can be in their home, but somebody who is requiring care, they're re requiring somebody to, somebody to assist them with things like transportation or um, the activities of daily living, so uh, uh, you know, toileting, feeding, that, that sort wow. of dressing, that sort of thing. They really need somebody to be there to assist them. It, it's mm -hmm. not just physical conditions, it could be uh, uh, serious, you know, mental health conditions as well. Um, anything that really requires consistent, ongoing care, um, and the, the way that uh, that claim would be filed 
uh, would be that you, you know, indicate that somebody who you're caring for has a serious health condition, um, and we haven't gotten into the application process, but there's a, a specific area where you don't have to say what the serious health condition is, but then um, the person who's getting the care gets a, um, a certification from a health care provider that says, yes, this is a serious health condition, and um, then hopefully the benefits uh, start flowing very quickly. So but, the easiest way, if, if right. care, care, it's all about I think, care. Yeah. I think that's really important is you don't have to go to your employer. It's going to be that person's doctor who makes that determination, who's the one who's going to certify that. So their doctor, who they have a relationship with, is able to say, this person needs caretaking, needs someone home with them, or needs someone at the hospital with them. That's great, Max, mm -hmm. because our next question is exactly that. Um, who makes that decision? The boss, the employer. But no, you've just cleared up for us that this is, yeah. Well, let's, let's be careful. So, so the determination about uh, the serious health condition is the doctor, mm -hmm. but you apply to take paid family leave to your insurance company. So they're the one who is actually going to review the, the, all of the forms and, and issue the decision. So let's say, um, let's say that somebody is in a situation where they say, I, I, you know, my father's having surgery in Arizona next week, and I need, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be taking leave. Uh, I'll be there for three weeks. Um, and, and they're given a hard time, let's say. Um, that's not allowed. <laughs> so, yeah, this is so, what if my boss refuses to right. let me take leave from right. uh, Mary from Brooklyn? Right. So what you do is you get a, a form, an application form. It could be available from your employer. You could get it from the insurance carrier. And every employer is required to have notice posted about this program and where to get information and who the insurance carrier is. If people don't know, they could go through the workers' comp board uh, to, to find out who the carrier is. Um, but once you know who the carrier is, you fill out the form, um, you give the form to the employer, they have three days to get it back to you, For their, they have a portion that they have to fill out, and then you go to uh, the insurance carrier, because this is an insurance product, that's one of the things that makes this very unique. The thought was, insurance carriers, for various uh, needs, they provide benefits all the time, whether it's auto insurance, life insurance, health insurance, and this is a benefit that's paid not by your employer but by the insurance carrier. So that you go to the carrier, and they're the ones, not the employer. The insurance carrier is the one who reviews your application, and they accept it. They have 18 days to accept it and pay you, or they let you know that they, the insurance carrier, has a problem with it. So the employer can put various information um, that could be relevant to your claim that that um, is designed to provide information to you and also the insurance carrier, but the ultimate decision is by the carrier. And then um, if they if they have a problem with it, they have to let you know. Mm -hmm. If let's say there's just something missing, right, you have an right. opportunity to correct it. Yeah. Um, and if you if you have completed all the information and gotten it to them and they still have an issue, um, then you still have an opportunity to um, have that resolved uh, very, very quickly. Um, and when I talk about carriers raising issues, I'm talking about things like, since you have to be there 26 weeks, if you applied and you've only been there 20 weeks, um, they could very well deny the claim. So that, that sort of thing. You said 18 days? They have 18 days to pay mm -hmm. you, the carrier, to pay you or to deny your claim. So that's a, that's a good, tight amount of time to get where you need to be, to get your answers and see if you're going to move forward, what direction you're going to go in. It's designed so, it's statutorily designed to provide direct economic protection to employees who need the paycheck, you know, in their regular cycle, which mm -hmm. for most people is, is, two, is you know, about two weeks um, right. with some processing time. So it's designed to provide the payment in you know in real time mm -hmm. um, or let you know that there's an issue and you can you can get it resolved quickly as well right do you want to add something yeah but just to make sure mary just to be clear you know it's not your employer's decision um whether you qualify it's your benefit and you apply to the insurance company they make the decision and then after if you have a problem with your employer um whether it's getting your job back or your full benefits or your full um or the same or comparable job when you come back there's a process for protection that you go to the Workers' Compensation Board. You can go to our website for more information uh, to make sure that your rights are enforced. Right. But you can take your leave if you qualify. 
Anything else we wanted to add about the application process? We were just talking about it. I just want to make sure we hit that as well. No one's asked about that yet. It might be coming up. Anything more to add there? Well, in addition to it being you know, generally available in multiple places, it's also designed to be easy because we, we talk about <laughs> <That's good. laughs> we talk yeah. about you know three different kinds of paid family leave. Whether it's bonding, and there's different types of types of the relationship that you're you know you're bonding, whether adopted, foster, or or a live birth, uh, childbirth rather, um, and there's uh, serious health, and there's the military uh, need for you know. Uh, to provide assistance in, in a situation of being deployed abroad. All of those are different, so all of those have different forms. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's designed to give you a place to put the targeted information about your particular need and the benefit that you're applying for. Good, very good. Let's see, I think we answered this, but let's do it again. Lauren, she might just be tuning in. Are both the new mother and new father eligible for paid family leave? Yes, it is parental leave. Uh, not maternity leave. It's it's absolutely both parents are absolutely entitled to the benefit. There's only one little, you know, little wrinkle, which is if both parents work for the same employer, mm -hmm. then their employer can tell them, "I'd prefer that you both not take the leave at the same time." They could also say it's okay with with them, but they're allowed to say if the, again, this is only if they both work for the same employer uh, that you might have to stack her. Okay. And we've it, heard from a lot of men already who were ready on day one to take their uh, paternity leave and be home with you know their new child. They were very excited. And it's something we're really encouraging because you know we we see in places where there are paid family leave around the world, um, it makes a big difference in the workplace. It makes a big difference for the health of the child to also get men to start taking their rights and taking paid family leave. And, and I know people are very excited about that. And just to be clear, for folks who may just be tuning in, it's not just parental leave. This is full family leave. Mm -hmm. So it's for caregiving, whether it's uh, for children, for parents, for domestic partners. Um, it wraps the entire family with protection and benefit. A lot of people involved. So we have, um, you just answered that you can do it. How long after the birth of a child can you take paid family leave? You said get it. How long after the birth of a child can you take family leave? You can take it within the first 12 months. Okay. So, like I said before, you know, a lot of a lot of parents might both take off right at the start, but then someone might go back to work and use their time later in the year as they need it, or you could both take off 8 weeks in this year and 12 weeks in a couple of years. Uh, but yes, within the first 12 months. So again, to answer a prior question, if you uh, had, had a child or adopted or took a child into, in, in foster care last year, you can still take it this year because it's within the first 12 months. Great, Max. Our next question is from Larry. What kind of proof do you need to provide when you are caring for a sick relative? Great question. So like I said earlier, this is a, there's a, a certification from a health care provider caring for the care recipient. Um, and it is fully compliant with the um, HIPAA laws, which deal with individual patients' privacy protections. That's very, very important. Um, so it's an indication that there is a serious health condition that, that qualifies, and I talked about that a little bit a few minutes ago, but that's the kind of evidence um, that's needed to, to submit when you're in that situation. So it's essentially a letter from a doctor. It's a form that the doctor fills out. And it's a letter from the care recipient's doctor. You yes. don't have to go to a different doctor. It's right. your, your family doctor. Mm -hmm. And there's a corollary question that we get a lot that I think would flow with this as well, which yeah. is um, this is a New York paid family leave program, but I want people to absolutely know that where the care recipient is, you know, whether it's your, uh, a, a sick mother, a sick father, a sick child, they can live anywhere in the world. What matters to be eligible for this program is that you, uh, as the person taking the leave and getting the benefit, are a New York employee. Thanks for right. adding that, David, because, yeah, you hear New York and you think mm -hmm. everyone's in the state, but that, that's awesome that you can care for yeah, someone People can travel, uh, you know, if they have family somewhere else. And, and we know um, with the situation currently in Puerto Rico that there's right. people who are going to be able to use paid family leave to go down, whether you take care of a family member there or you bring them back and take care of them here. If they're in need of caregiving, you can go down, um, help your family member come back while you're on paid family leave, go to the doctor, get the certification here in New York, mm -hmm. and uh, be able to take care of them and help them get situated and get their health back in order. 
the time to have to do that I know. is so invaluable I know. when you talk about it, get choked up just to be able to have uh -huh. that time, you know, it's something. Yeah. Hey, he's great. All right, let's see. Ben, how is the Paid Family Leave Act different from what benefits my company offers? Well, it, it that's a very broad, broad question. question. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think maybe the way to yeah. look at it and yeah. chime in, obviously, yeah. uh, uh, but is that, you know, before January 1st of this year, there were no guaranteed periods of leave to cover bonding, um, uh, caring for a relative with a serious health condition or the military leave in New York that provided paid benefits, job protective benefits. That didn't exist at all. Some companies um, provide these benefits already. This is not designed to eliminate those benefits. So to the extent that they um, want to be more generous, uh, want to have different benefits that are in place, um, to the extent that an employer is willing to uh, let's say top off your salary, meaning let's say you earn $1,000 a week um, and the, the benefit for paid family leave is roughly $650 a week. Um, your employer can top off those benefits and provide the, th the $1,000 a week uh, and that triggers certain things like reimbursement, et cetera. But the bottom line is they're not, they're not required to lower their benefits to the statutory threshold. It's just we wanted to guarantee that these benefits were available. So it really depends on what other benefit uh, is is in play it's there. It's available to you and in play. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Understood. That makes sense. Okay. Santos, please clarify for undocumented illegal workers, are they or are they not entitled to paid leave? Do you want me to take that? Sure. Um, so there's no... Uh, there's no discrimination in New York. It's it's for employees. So the all employees, documented or not, um, are entitled to take uh, paid family leave. So we don't require any particular citizenship documentation. We don't require any. Um, it's if you're an employee, you are eligible for paid family leave. Moving on, Lisa from Freeport, New York. Can this apply to father for paternity leave? Would the dates have to be different than the maternal leaves or can they overlap? Everybody's asking this question, yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, so like more I, or less whatever you want. Yeah. I mean yeah. you know, you can you can schedule your leave time, whatever makes sense for your family. Mm -hmm. right. Good. So here we go. I might need to take notes for this next one. Okay. Nina Kay from Oyster Bay, New York. Can you please explain how a female employee who makes $200,000 a year will be affected by this policy? From my understanding, there is also an income cap of how much of that 50% in the first year rollout will be paid out to the mother. So I think uh, uh, that's a great question. And, and I think if you think about it in terms of $200,000, um, and you and you kind of work backwards, it could sound very complicated, so I'm going to try to answer it in a more simple, yes. straightforward way. If you think about this thing that I had also mentioned before, the statewide average weekly wage, that's, that's the, the number, the maximum number upon which benefits are calculated. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's you know roughly sixty-seven thousand mm -hmm. dollars a year if you if you annualize it over the course of the year. And so if you're taking your maximum benefit, um, it comes out to, as I said, 50% of that, which would be $650, because it, it, it's the statewide average weekly wage is you know, roughly 1300 and change um, a week. So the maximum benefit is 650. So whether you earn $67,000 or $670,000 or $6,700,000, God bless you, yes. your maximum benefit under this is for that first year, for those eight weeks, roughly $650 a week. And your contribution is, to it is, is maximized at 0.0126% uh, of your salary, which for most uh, people, that's going to mean uh, uh, that uh, for if you're making more than $67,000 a year, if you work every week uh, and you get paid uh, regularly, that that's um, about $1.65 a week. So that's Again, as long as you cross those thresholds, it doesn't matter how, how much you exceed those th thresholds. But just to be clear, before yeah. January 1st, um, given the situation, there was no benefit. Correct. Um, so, you know, now uh, Lisa can, um, 
get those benefits uh, that she wasn't able to 12 days ago. And not just not just the pay benefits, but the job protection. You can take the time Absolutely. off from the job protection. And, you know, as we talked about, you can't put a price on that. Yeah. 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 What's the response? What, are, what does this mean for people, Laura? You, you know, this is, this is life-changing for people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, before, I think there was a lot of fear and uncertainty. Um, you know, you can't always plan for family caregiving, and especially when you're you know, dealing with aging parents or a spouse who might have, you know, some sort of chronic illness, it, it can be very difficult. Um, I think it's really peace of mind. You know, people are enthusiastic about this. I'm hearing um, not just from AARP members, but from millennials and Gen Xers who are taking care of children and adopting and fostering and taking care of their parents and really worrying about, you know, where's their career going and, you know, feeling, feeling the economic pinch a little bit. You know, this provides so much peace of mind. It just takes that level of anxiety and worry and, you know, brings it down to something a little bit more manageable. I like how when we were talking earlier, you said, and for the employer to be able to do this so the people, yes. yeah, you could speak to that. Yeah, this is, this is wonderful. You know, to one of the questions before, you know, how does this work with the benefit my employer is offering, you know, a lot of small mom and pop operations don't have the money to be able to offer this kind of benefit. I um, mean, I love, and I'm, I'm hearing from friends who are, you know, small small business owners that, you know, to be able to offer this benefit to their employees, um, not only you know keeps their employees in the economy, but it gives them a competitive edge, you know, because this is a benefit that all of us will be able to tap into, not just big employers. Good, very nice. Danielle, I want to, yeah. because we've, we've sort of touched on this idea of job protection, if, uh, if I could just say a few words about Absolutely. how that works yeah, and how it'll work practically, that. because it's one, thing to, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. it's one thing to say it's job protected, but you know, what does that actually mean right. for individuals? So what it means is that when you take uh, your paid family leave that you are entitled to under the law, that when you come back after the leave is over, uh, that you're entitled to your job back, which means a same, the same job or a similar job. Um, you can't suffer uh, a loss of benefits. They can't take your health insurance away. They can't tell you that they're, they're going to put you on half time because you left for a month and I had to hire a replacement. Uh, what they have to do is give you the same or similar job back. If they don't, there's a process in place it's fully explained at our website, but I'll just go through it kind of very briefly, sure. which is that there's this form available that you're in a situation where your employer has said, I'm, I'm not able to take you back. And I'm not saying that they're necessarily, you know, have a bad motivation. They, they could just feel like right. I, I just, I can't do this, right. but the job, but the, uh, the statute protects that employee. So you're entitled to that job back. So you, um, Fill out a, a form. Uh, I hope it's a pretty <laughs> simple form. It's on our uh, on our website that you take to the employer, and it's basically a, a demand to get your job back because we want people to be able to prove that this happened, so that you don't have a situation if it goes to a hearing that it's all just you know he said she said type of stuff. So mm -hmm. you go to the employer. It's a demand. You know, please give me my job back. Please reinstate me. Um, they have some time to respond to that. Um, or they could not respond, in which case that's taken as a, a no. And then you fill out a form seeking um, relief from discrimination because it's considered a form of discrimination to be retaliated against or to not have your job reinstated. So if that happens, you, you file a claim. The employer has a chance to respond to it. There can be legitimate reasons, like um, they're a seasonal employer and they're not operating right now. Mm. Um, your job has been eliminated. They've declared bankruptcy. They're out of business. I mean, yeah, there are right. there are actual reasons, um, but the the general rule is that they have to you know reinstate you. So, when that happens, um, we now have some documentation about what happened to you and what the employer says happened to you, um, and then at that point it goes to a hearing in front of a law judge in. Uh, at my agency, the Workers' Compensation Board. And at the end of that, the board has some pretty broad powers here. We can actually uh, issue a directive to reinstate you to your job, and we can pay uh, damage. We could have the damages paid to you for wages that you've lost um, if you're not working in the interim. Um, there's also a penalty that could be applied against the 
uh, employer. And there's also other forms of discrimination, too, that people can keep in mind, too. For example, if, um, if your employer uh, takes an action that indicates, oh, you're taking paid family leave, you know, I don't like... I don't like uh, women of childbearing age. <laughs> you know, I don't like pregnant women. Uh, th th that is a form of human rights, mm -hmm. a violation right. of human rights, um, and that's something that can be handled uh, through a, a human rights complaint as well. Or if, you know, ageism, I mean, there's certain forms of discrimination um, that you have other remedies, but the one I wanted to specifically mention was failure to reinstate your job. So there is a provision in place. We don't want people to think that you know, this is a paper tiger mm -hmm. that we're just mm -hmm. telling people that they mm -hmm. have job protection. We actually really mean it, and we are going to uh, enforce it strictly. Yeah. And, and to the previous question about how does this differ from what uh, the person's employer might offer, I think this is a really critical difference in that this tiger has teeth. Um, this has the force of law behind it, and you know, depending on how the person's employee employer handles their benefits, that might not be the case. Uh, but this has, you know, serious enforcement, um, and it, it's a, the protections are, are there for good reason. I think it makes all the difference to know you will have your job when you return. How do you go about um, just having those conversations with your employer that it's, that what's going on in your life? Like, how do you suggest having just an open conversation so you do work this out on great terms that are good for you, good for the employer? So when you come back, you don't find yourself in a situation you don't want to be in, and it's just a really smooth workflow, you know, and it works out for you. Well, I think this timing is great. You know, having the law in place now for a little bit more than a week is a good opportunity for people to talk to their employers and say, you know, I've, I've heard about this new paid family leave law, and I thought it was a good chance for, for us to have a dialogue you know let me let me talk to you as a real person and tell you what's going on in my life a little bit um, and, and let's talk about you know I might need to have some time off to take care of my mom who's getting chemo or you know surprise I'm pregnant um, so you know here's a conversation about that uh, but this is a good framework and I think it's a safe context uh, for people to have those very personal conversations with an employer um, you know, and it provides enough of a, of a framework where, you know, it's not going to go too far afield. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's focused on, you know, scheduling and getting this employee benefit. Structure. Yeah, it should be it should be fairly simple right. for most people. I mean, we've been doing a lot of outreach to businesses around the state so that they're aware. They're aware. Um, and they've also been hearing from their insurance carriers because they have this benefit now. So um, employers should be aware. Um, the law... Um, you know, and David talked about this before, before you actually take your leave, if possible, you're supposed to give your employer at least 30 days notice. Again, there are situations where you can't do that, but that allows for no surprises. It allows everyone to be ready to get, you know, to make sure that your work will be covered usually by other employees. But so it should be a, a smooth process. And um, again, if it's not in the hopefully very, very small to no, no circumstances that it's not. There's a very simple process, and, and David walked through it, and it's all on the website for if you have any problems. Great. Well, we hope everybody has the best, best smooth. possible smooth. smooth. And I yeah. like the application was easy, David. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it sounds user friendly. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Great, great. Okay, Janice, um, I had a baby in May of... Do, 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 do. Okay, new question. I wanted to make sure it wasn't the exact. I had a baby in May of 2017 and took FMLA, which ran concurrently with my six-week paid leave. Am I entitled to take FMLA in 2018 for the same pregnancy? I'm just sort of reading over the yeah, question. Yeah, you want to read again? I think her question is, can she use New York's paid family leave now? In other words, it sounds like oh, okay, she used right. the question. federal yes, FMLA right. and disability. Right. So you, you are absolutely entitled to take the full amount of the um, paid family leave in 2018, even if your FMLA credits had actually been exhausted in 2017. This is a situation that's going to arise this year. It's the first year of implementation. Mm -hmm. you know, going forward, it really shouldn't be a problem uh, because the benefits should, should uh, coordinate to, uh, pretty smoothly. But, but yes, you can take your full uh, up to eight weeks of leave in 2018. And congratulations. As long as it's within one yeah, year. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, congratulations. <laughs> I just want to clarify. As long as it's within, it's within one year of birth with a, a, so May of 2017. 17. So you have until whatever date that is in, in May of 2018 yeah. to take the eight weeks. So we have a compliment. Jenna likes the web chat. Thanks, Jenna. And she also, Hi, Jenna. Wants, Jenna. <laughs> she also wants to know, can the forms be completed online? 
So that's going to depend um, individually on your uh, employer uh, because they fill out a part of it and your insurance carrier and how what the process they're going to have in place. All of the forms are available right now on our website, which I'm going to plug again. Do it again, yeah. ny.gov slash paid family leave. Um, so all the forms are available there, and you can fill out a good portion of it, but, you know, since it has to move around, it just depends on what your business or what your employer and what your insurance carrier is prepared to do. So you might have to print it at some point. But I know a lot of people are trying to make it uh, as simple and uh, electronic as possible. And Max, the 800 number, again, for the people who sure. were there in the beginning. It's actually an 844 number. Sorry, 844-337-6303. And our, you know, our team can answer any of these questions, can help you with uh, filling out your forms, answering any of those questions. If you don't know your insurance carrier that you should be applying to because you can't find it at your employer's office, we can help you find that. Any questions you have, we're ready to, to answer them. And Laura, could you speak to what's on the AARP sites that you mentioned earlier? Sure. So there's there. there's some basic information on New York's paid leave program, and I actually believe we link uh, to your website, which is great. Uh, but we also offer a tremendous amount of resources for family caregivers, whether you're caring um, for children or caring uh, for parents and spouses. Um, there's you know links to connect with other family caregivers, ways to share your story. Uh, so that other caregivers can learn from from your experience. Uh, just a lot of resources. I was wondering, Danielle, yeah. if, if uh, you might want me to, to follow up on something that has been mentioned again in a couple of questions, which is about that uh, Family Medical and Leave Act. The reason yeah. I, I say it is that's because it. is because that's FMLA, and since paid family leave in New York um, applies to um, all in employees and employers, uh, private employers, mandatorily, um, regardless of the size of the workforce. Uh, that's something that probably a lot of viewers um, work for an employer who is a small employer and yeah. have really don't know what FMLA is. Right. So I just thought I'd mention it a little bit. So FMLA, the Family Medical Leave Act, it applies to employers that have 50 or more uh, employees. And it's unpaid. It's unpaid leave. And it covers for your own illness and it covers for uh, also for a family member and it provides for bonding and the military leave like New York does as well. But again, the key things, you know, 50 or more employees and unpaid. Mm -hmm. So w with the uh, New York law, um, obviously it's paid. Uh, one or more employees, that employer must get paid family leave. Um, and there's a couple of other differences too. So in New York, we had touched upon the fact that you don't have to take your paid leave all in, in one chunk or two chunks. You could take it on intermittent days, like if you have someone that's um, having ongoing care like chemotherapy once one day a week, for example, or as needed. Um, that's a little different than FMLA. In FMLA, you can actually take uh, you know smaller chunks, parts of a day as FMLA. You can't do, in New York, you have to take whole days. So we have a provision designed to synchronize them if you're in that situation. So let's just say, for example, you work an eight-hour day, and um, four times in, a, in any given week you had to take two hours and use two hours of FMLA. By the fourth day, you'll have taken eight hours of FMLA. That's counted as, for you, one day of paid family leave. And that's just designed to kind of keep the balance sheet you know, normalized for that particular employer. But again, a lot of employers, they're small employers, they don't necessarily have an employee benefits manager or an HR manager. Um, they're going to be very familiar with paid family leave, but I don't want anybody to be under the impression that FMLA now applies to you know, all employers. Uh, it's still the 50 or more threshold. Um, another difference between FMLA and paid family leave is um, in PFL, we use the acronym a lot, so I think that's the first time we've used it today. Yes, <laughs> paid family leave. Yeah. So, so for, for, for uh, paid family leave, you, if you're caring for uh, uh, a loved one with a serious health condition, um, it includes you can care for your child uh, of any age. And this is something I think of, of concern also for AARP. Yeah. It's, it's one of the nice uh, features of the New York paid family leave law. So if you're, you know, 90 and you have a 70 year old child, uh, yeah. you, and you're in great health, but your 70 year old child is not, you can care for the 70 year old child. Um, so that, that's, that's, I think, an important feature. Um, 
It's not that way under the FMLA. Uh, it's only uh, children up to age of 18 unless they have, you know, a, a very, very serious uh, physical or mental disability. They're capped at, at 18. Um, so I don't know if anyone out there may have some other questions on FMLA. And if you don't get a chance to raise them during this web chat, definitely call that 800, uh, that 844 number, excuse me, and we answer questions about the interaction between the two laws all the time, um, and we have lots of information on our website. It's one of the important things. It's new, it's so new, yeah. people are, you know, people are a little bit confused about it, and we're trying to, to provide uh, the best information possible. Yeah, absolutely, and thank you for clarifying that because I'm sure that is, it is new, it is new, and, and just by tuning in, we hope that you have gained some clarity about it, and now you can go out, and if you want more, there's great resources. Do your homework, get everything you need to do, you know, set yourself up for success. This is a huge opportunity. Yeah. Anything else um, anyone wants to add to David's point or just little nuggets that you think the viewers should really We're know? We're out of time already? We're almost there. Oh, no. Back. It's got about five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone wants to just add something that they really want to get across, um, you know, please feel free. You know, I would say, you know, it, it never hurts to ask. You know, if you're in a caregiving situation, you know, certainly families are as complicated and situations are as complicated and diverse um, as New York is. Uh, <laughs> it, it can't hurt to call that 844 number and just find out if this is something you can tap into. You know, it, it, it sounds like it's an accessible program. I know uh, the folks answering the phone are incredibly helpful. Um, so just call and ask if you've got a question and, you know, see if you can tap into this. Great, Laura. Your wish for the program. What are your hopes? You guys have been working on this a bit, David, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. You know, I, I think the implementation so far has been smooth. A lot of people um, have put a tremendous amount of work for it, uh, uh, on it. Um, to make it a success, both in the government and all the stakeholder groups, in, including definitely AARP. Um, and I think people are very, very invested in the success of this program. Mm -hmm. um, speaking on behalf of my agency, you know, it's very important to us to make sure that um, that all employers are compliant with the law, that they all have the coverage that they need uh, to be compliant with the law, that we provide them all the information that they need, um, be it on you know how to file a claim or in the event of a dispute, how does it get resolved? Um, we, try to, we try to design the, the regulations for this law so that it's an employee benefit, not a claim, and that may sound like just semantics, but you know, these are people that are in acute situations that they need to know that they're gonna put in for this benefit, and that two weeks later when they get their paycheck, the benefit's gonna show up. Right. Um, so it, we, you know, that's really what we're gonna be looking towards monitoring this year are our, our um, claims being responded to by the carriers on time um, is there a confusion out there on anything that we can clarify are the benefits flowing um, and are we doing what we need to do if there is a dispute or a discrimination claim great coming to the end i'm going to squeeze it in really quick here one last question from marlene i tuned in when you noted that you had to be employed in new york and take leave to care for a family member anywhere in the world that's awesome just so i'm clear i live in new jersey but work in new york am i eligible if so this is really incredible and that'll be our last question yeah so if uh, uh, the the answer is uh, for, for the vast vast majority of people in in your situation the answer is going to be absolutely yes and and what i'm talking about is if you if you're actually working every day in New York or that's where your regular employment is, absolutely. The only people that, if your situation was a little different, where you really were working in New Jersey and you know every so often you had to come into New York mm -hmm. for a day here or a day there, that might not qualify. But based just on the way you're describing it, you could tell I'm a lawyer. I'm just. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. We've heard a lot of these scenarios, a lot of situations. Uh, yeah. Just based on what I'm seeing here, about I, you know, it doesn't matter that you live in New Jersey. The fact that you that you work in New York, yeah. um, as long as it's regular employment, then yes, it's available to you. Okay, very good. Okay, guys, um, I think that's about it. So we just want to thank everyone for joining us. Thank you, guys. You have been so informative, really, adding so much clarity. So we appreciate it. And thank you all. We hope that you learn something, and we hope that you feel good about it on your journey as a caregiver. And we wish everyone the best. We'll see you next time at our next live web chat here on ABC7NY.com. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a great evening.